Hello. Um. So yeah, this is the sixth problem of this RMO. It's uh. So yes, the question is not fully visible. All it says is that the part which you can't see is that n is a positive integer, and that one is less than a one. One is equal to a one, and the rest is just um cyclic qualities. A two less than blah 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 less than a k, which is equal to n. And every term divides the next. So, for example, you can start with one and then take a multiple of one, which is say two, the multiple of two, six, and then a multiple of six. So, if you choose to end over here, then this thing is a twelfth chain because it ends with a twelve. And of course, you are not allowed to say that like you are not allowed to do something like one, two, six, and then six again. It has to be something different because these are all strict qualities. <clears throat> and we have to prove that this f of n is the number of such sequences and chains. And we have to prove that f of 2 to the m times 3 is equal to this, this quantity. Okay. So, as you can see, we usually, the way we'll define such a chain is somewhat inductively in a sense so like you define um a chain till a k minus one and then you add an a k which is a multiple of k a k minus one so it makes a lot of sense in this problem to do something like if a k is equal to n then a k minus one can be any of uh any divisor of n any factor of n and for that particular factor then it just has to be a chain with that like n instead of an n chain and m chain but m is the value of a k minus one so in fact we can do it recursively so you'll get something like f of n is equal to sub summation well d divides n d is of course not equal to n f of d so f of this is just uh for this thing stands for when a k minus one is equal to d And over here, we want to evaluate this particular thing, value. So, for example, okay, so let's see. We want to show it for every positive integer. So, in this case, it also holds for every m equal to 0, which is nice to know. But we don't quite need that. So you have to evaluate this. So of course, this is just, now we want to group the factors, which is all right, because it's mostly powers of two, which can vary, but you also have a factor of three. So we'll break it down into two different types of devices. So this is just powers of i. I can go from zero to, um, m yes to m because 2 raised to m is also not equal to 3 so that also works plus summation of 2 to the i times 3 so this is again i can go from 0 to i can go from 0 to in this case it can't be m because then that would then like 2 to the m times 3 is equal to n itself. So we have d not equal to n. Okay. So first let's work out this. What is f of 2 to the i? So the thing is that we are going in powers, right? So we will have 1, which is a student 0. And then you'll have some power of 2. And then some other power of 2 and so on. And like divisibility is of course not a problem. Because powers of 2 divide each other. So basically, every such n chain corresponds to a set, a subset, a set of powers of two. That's all it is. Like the set of powers of two, which are there in the n chain. And then the way to arrange it is, of course, clear. And all of that is fine. So let's see, what can the set of powers of two be? One is there. 2 to the m is there for sure, but everything else you can determine freely. So the idea is it can be any subset 
of two, four, blah blah blah, till two raised to m minus one. So of course you do have two raised to m and one also, but those are fixed. So we don't even care too much about them because they're there in any case. We don't have any freedom in that case. So number of such subsets just this, which is so this has m minus one elements. So it's two to the m minus one. Okay, sorry. Uh, two to the i minus one. This is i minus one. This is also i minus one. Okay. Nice. So now let's just evaluate sums. Or, um, so we can do that. But then this thing is a little bit complicated. Because over here, we know the value of this for i less than m. But then we will have to sum over these sorts of things. So we, okay, so here's the main idea. You have, you also have f of 2 raised to m minus 1 times 3 is equal to, by the same thing, i is equal to 0 to m minus 1, f of 2 to the i, plus um, summation, i is equal to 0 to m minus 2, times f of 2 to the i times 3. So these two sequences are very, very similar. You just happen to have that one extra sort of uh, term over here in, in both the summations. So the key idea is that you can write f of 2 to the m times 3 is equal to f of uh, 2 to the m minus 1 times 3 plus those extra elements in the sum, which is like in this case, you have the extra f of 2 to the m Plus, over here, you have f of uh, 2 to the i. So, here i is equal to m minus 1 is the case which is missing over here in this one. So, 2 to the m minus 1 times 3. Okay. And now, we will induct because you have a recursion. So, that is what you do when you have a recursion. Induct. Say, so induct on n. Base cases are easy to check, I assume. I mean, base cases are like 6 and yeah, that's it. You have to check 6. Or also, if you want to save time, then you can just check 3. Because why not? Okay. Um. So now, yeah, now you just evaluate the sum and it will sort of work out. This is times 2 to the m minus 1. And then you have 2 times this, right? So you have 2 times this into 2 into 2 okay wait this is 2 times m minus 1 minus 1 plus 2 times m minus 1 so yes this just turns out to be m plus 2 times 2 this to m minus 1 and okay we are done because so again to repeat we mostly did we the key idea was to induct and then you get the summation and you notice how similar it is to the summation for 2 to the m minus 1 and uh, then it's just a bunch of algebra. Okay. Thank you. You need to draw the box. Okay.